Now, cholesterol is not always the easiest topic to get your head around. So we're going to start really simply, I hope. Um, Lynn, can you just start by explaining to us exactly what cholesterol is? So cholesterol is a type of fat. Um, it's essential for life. We need it to make cell walls. We need it to make certain hormones, certain vitamins such as vitamin D and something called bile, which helps us digest fats in the gut. The problem is, is when we have too much cholesterol in the blood because that can pass over into the arterial wall and that's where problems can occur. Now, most of the cholesterol that is carried around in the blood is actually made in the liver uh, with a small amount coming from our foods. So is, the, is that the issue when there's too much cholesterol, that's the link with heart disease? Absolutely. So over time, this cholesterol can build up and get laid down into the walls of the artery. And over time, something called a fatty plaque uh, develops. And as that grows, it can cause the arteries to narrow and potentially eventually block. Now, that process is called atherosclerosis. And when um, the blood vessels lead into the heart to get blocked, that can cause coronary heart disease. And you've mentioned coronary heart disease there, and we always think, don't we, about the heart and cholesterol. Are there any other areas of the body, though, where this sort of thing can happen, these plaques can develop? Absolutely. So in, it can happen in the arteries and the vessels leading to the brain, which can result in a stroke, which can result in a mini stroke and even vascular dementia. And it can also happen in the legs, this buildup, which could lead to something called peripheral artery disease. Now, this is the umbrella term. All these diseases, coronary heart disease, um, strokes, peripheral artery disease, they all come under the umbrella of cardiovascular disease, which basically means diseases of the heart and the circulation. OK, and cholesterol plays a part in all of those. Cholesterol plays a part in all of those, but we must remember that it doesn't just happen. You know, heart disease, coronary heart disease is something like 40 years in the making. It's that gradual build up. So it's what's important to remember is that um, the longer you keep your cholesterol lower, the lower your risk of cardiovascular disease. And we mentioned, Lynn, at the beginning, there are multiple risk factors um, that might lead somebody towards coronary heart disease. Um, if we're thinking then about adapting some of those risk factors, are we better focusing on one or two of those and doing them really, really well? Or can we try and just do a little bit of all of them? It's important to get all your risk factors under control. So whilst cholesterol is a major risk factor, there are the other risk factors as well. And they need to be looked at together. You shouldn't just look at cholesterol in isolation because it doesn't give you your overall picture of cardiovascular disease risk. OK, so I mean, again, just as we do with anything, to do with menopause, we're looking at the whole person and each woman's menopause is different. Similarly, each person's cardiovascular journey, I guess, is different and we need to look at that as a whole. Absolutely. That makes perfect sense. So do we know then some people have high cholesterol and no matter what they do, you know, you and I, both dietitians, could not pick holes in their diet and their lifestyle. It doesn't bring it down. Is there something else going on? Is there a genetic reason why you might have high cholesterol? Well, there are a number of reasons for high cholesterol, and these do need to be considered, particularly if you are following a healthy diet and lifestyle. So there's certain medications which can increase cholesterol. There's certain medical conditions that can increase cholesterol. And there is also an inherited cholesterol condition as well. And this condition is called familial hypercholesterolemia or FH for short. And the people who have this condition, this inherited condition, actually have a lifelong exposure to high cholesterol. So they are at a much greater risk of developing early coronary heart disease if it isn't treated and diagnosed. Right, okay. So, yeah, again, different things going on that, that might affect different people. Mm -hmm. Our focus um, at Holly Street at home is on menopause. Um, and I know we're going to talk specifically about cholesterol and menopause. Can I ask you, though, if somebody has 
is watching this and they have had high cholesterol for years, decades maybe, and they are deciding now that they want to do something to address that. Does that make any difference compared to somebody whose cholesterol has only just gone up in perimenopause or menopause, if there's been a, a long history? If there's been a long history, it, it really is important to take steps to actively lower your cholesterol. Now, what your cholesterol target may be, may be different for different people because it really depends on whether there's other risk factors as well. So as I say, the, the message really here is to keep your cholesterol lower for longer and that will, be a, that will have a lower risk um, in terms of your cardiovascular disease risk. Message received. Now, I can imagine, as with so many aspects of health and medicine, um, there will be so many things we still don't know about cholesterol. We certainly don't know everything about menopause. Um, and we don't always have clear answers for everything. But in terms of cholesterol and menopause, where are we? What's our understanding of the two and if there's any link? What we do know um, around the menopause is cholesterol and other blood fats um, increase. Um, so the risk factors you mentioned earlier, which also happen around the menopause, which increase um, as with the cholesterol, and that puts women at a higher risk of diseases of the heart and blood vessels after the menopause than compared to before the menopause. So it's really important to get any risk factors and cholesterol under control. Oh, why we're doing this. It is such an important topic um, and something that I think many women are, are really only addressing or, or registering now. Um, so I'm so thrilled that we're able to do this. And, and actually what's really surprising, Nigel, is that around two thirds of women aged between 55 and 64 have high cholesterol. And even between the ages of 45 and 54, more than half of those women have high cholesterol. Wow. So it's really important, as you can see, it goes up during yeah. the menopause. Yeah.